This video is an introduction to gene expression, focused on how this can be brought about by altering the products of transcription, regulating translation, and also post-translation modification of proteins. As we discussed in the previous video, there are comparatively few genes which need to be expressed in all cells at all times. We call these housekeeping genes, and these are for things like respiration, which all cells need to be doing. But most genes are not like this. Either they're tissue specific, in which case, if it is a tissue that needs to express that gene, it can be turned on permanently. And if it's not a gene that is expressed in that tissue, then it can be turned off permanently. And then there are also other genes which only need to be expressed in response to a particular stimulus. So these need to be upregulated or downregulated depending on what is happening in both the external and internal environment. This regulation can happen at various different points. In the previous video, we looked at transcriptional control, and now we're going to discuss post-transcriptional, translational, and post-translational control. The process of transcription uses the template of the DNA in order to make a pre-mRNA molecule. This requires further processing before it turns into a mature mRNA molecule, which can be used for protein synthesis. And whether or not this RNA processing happens and how it happens is going to control how much of the protein is made and also exactly what type of protein is made. So the first step that we need to undergo is splicing. And this is because rather like the DNA that it was made from, this mRNA contains both coding and non-coding regions. So the regions that actually contain the base sequence that codes for the protein are called exons. And then in between these are introns. And these may be completely junk DNA, but they may also include some promoter regions. And these need to be removed before the um, mRNA can be translated to make protein. So we undergo splicing and then we have a much smaller molecule which only contains the coding regions. However, this is at serious risk of degradation because in the cell there are lots of enzymes whose whole role is to break down nucleic acids. And the reason for this is that if there is RNA or DNA just loose in the cell, that's usually an indication that there's been some kind of viral infection. So RNases and DNases exist to break down these nucleic acids where they find them. So there are two things that the cell does to protect the mRNA. The first one is to add what we call a poly A tail. So this is literally a string of a lot of adenine nucleotides. And the idea here is that the RNAs will start breaking down that molecule from the three prime end. And so the first thing it has to do is to break down all of those adenines. And hopefully that will give the mRNA long enough to have been translated before the enzyme reaches the coding region of the mRNA. The other thing that we do is we add a cap at the five prime end. So this is made from a modified nucleotide. And again, this is going to make the mRNA persist for longer and help to prevent it from being degraded. Once these things have happened, we can now refer to this as mature mRNA. At this point, this can be translated to make protein. However, there are a couple of other things we can do. One of these is alternative splicing. So this is the idea that we may have one string of mRNA, which could actually make a couple of different proteins, depending on which particular exons are included. So here I've included all four of my exons, but it's possible that we might have one protein which only included exons one, two, and three, and then a different protein which included exons two, three, and four. So it's possible for the mRNA to be spliced differently to make a different protein. The other thing that we can have is RNA editing, and this basically performs the exact same function as a point mutation. So we can add, delete or substitute bases. And again, this can help us to make a different version of the protein. Time for a quick progress check to make sure that you understand how post-transcriptional gene regulation works. The difference between exons and introns is that exons are for coding for functional protein, whereas introns are not coding. In order to make mature mRNA, the pre-mRNA must be spliced, it must have a 5 prime cap added, and it needs a poly-A tail. RNA editing is carried out so that lots of different proteins can be made from the same mRNA molecule. The next point at which genes can be regulated is translational control. So basically, do you want translation to go ahead or don't you? The first thing we can do is to try to stop mRNA being broken down. So as we've described, having a poly A tail makes an mRNA molecule resistant to digestion by RNases. And so the longer your poly A tail is, the longer that mRNA will persist. 
On the other hand, if you have got mRNA in the cell, it's going to interact with ribosomes unless you do something to stop it. So if you're wanting there to be less protein produced, one thing you can do is to produce inhibitory proteins. And these are going to stop the mRNA from being able to interact with the ribosome so less protein is made. On the other hand, if you do want lots of the protein to be made, then you can activate some initiation factors. And the way this is usually done is by phosphorylating them. So um, protein kinases are molecules that will phosphorylate different other molecules. And in doing so, this tends to change the tertiary structure of the protein and make it more active and therefore make it function more highly. So kinases can be used to increase the amount of protein and how active it is. And then the final point at which it's possible for us to change gene expression or change the amount of a certain protein being made is the post-translational stage. And this is often going to happen within the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. The first thing we can do is add various different non-protein groups onto a protein. And this could affect the way in which it bonds and the way in which it interacts with other molecules. So for instance, we could add carbohydrate chains, we could add lipids to make lipoproteins, and also we could add phosphate groups. Alternatively, we can modify the particular amino acids and in doing this, we can influence the bonding. So, for instance, the amino acid cysteine is particularly good at forming disulfide bridges and this can really influence the tertiary structure of a protein. So by substituting in a cysteine amino acid, we can really change the shape of that protein. And then finally, again, we can use the cyclic AMP in order to modify proteins, as we've seen in the LAC operon, where the CAMP joins together with CRP to produce a complex. And when that complex binds, it goes on to increase transcription. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure that you check out part one for transcriptional control. If you did find this useful, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level biology videos coming soon.